What is going on everybody? It's your boy Nathan Muskills and in today's video from Ghost Recon Breakpoint we're going to be talking about weapon customization and the gunsmith because those two things in this game are pretty impressive. So right off the bat we see I am running two weapons plus a sidearm so I have the M4A1, I have the SVD and I have the P227. Now all of three of these weapons can be edited in the gunsmith but we're going to take a look at one of my favorite weapons that I use in every single shooter, the M4A1. Now just looking at this image right here, look at the amount of detail they put into this and I'm very impressed right off the bat. This looks like an M4A1 that I wanna be running around with. But hey, looks aren't everything, right? So what does the gunsmith do? And what can we do in the gunsmith? So right off the bat, if we look at the bottom left, we can see the stats for this weapon accuracy, handling, range, mobility, recoil. We can see the type of ammo this gun uses, 5.56. The magazine count is 30, and then we have single or auto rifle. To the right of that, we have what we call MK1, or your mark upgrade. Now this can improve different stats from accuracy, handling, range, mobility, recoil from your weapon, but it does require different things to do it. So either assault rifle parts, metal parts, or different things that will allow you to upgrade it. And as you see, I just upgraded my accuracy, so my accuracy tab went up on it. Now I am able to upgrade my range too, so I'm going to unlock this upgrade. Now as soon as you do upgrade, on the left hand side where it shows the accuracy, handling, range, and those stats, you'll see that they do change. But every time you use an upgrade, this does require different components. Some require metal parts, some require the assault rifle parts, some require the standard weapon parts. Now, how do you get these parts, right? How do you get these components so that you're able to upgrade this? Well, that's where you have to go into your other weapons and deconstruct them. So I'm gonna pull one up right now for you guys. Um, I don't really want this P90. So what we're gonna do is where it says dismantle, we are going to dismantle this and there you go. We get one metal part, we get one standard weapon part and we get one SMG part. So whatever specific type weapon you dismantle is the specific type of weapon part you're gonna get. So if it's an SMG, you'll get the SMG. And there is a perk, ability, whatever you guys wanna call it, in the skill tree that awards you more parts for dismantling. So definitely check that out. Also remember, you can upgrade this MK1 mark upgrade to two and three in your skill tree. It will require you two skill points for mark two and then four skill points for mark three. But in your skill tree, you do have the ability to upgrade this and of course, the higher you upgrade this, the more powerful that weapon can become as you continue to upgrade the accuracy, that recoil and that mobility. So that is something that I really like about this game. But customization and upgrading your weapon doesn't start there. Now let's get into the weapon parts because that is where the gunsmith really excels. If we take a look at the gunsmith, we are going to take a look at the magazine first. We have your standard magazine that comes on all weapons. And then as we upgrade the magazine, we have one that's an extended mag, more shots, but you get more recoil. And then we have the smaller magazine that's less shots, but you have a shorter reload time. So depending on your play style and depending on what you're doing, this could be something you wanna play with, but it doesn't stop there. We have our muzzles. So we have the standard muzzle that comes on every weapon. And this one just allows you to equip your silencer if you have one. The next muzzle is the ASR compensator reduces vertical recoil, bigger muzzle flash. And we continue on with the flash hider, which hides the muzzle flash, making consecutive shots easier. So right there, you see it says negative 20% shot spread. The next muzzle is the ASR muzzle break. This reduces inward kick, most noticeable in hit fire. So you get negative 20% hit fire recoil and negative 5% shots. And then the final one, the ASR suppressor, which reduces the sound at the cost of damage. So negative 20% damage. The next thing we're gonna dive into are the rail covers. You have your default rail cover, then we get into the ones that actually do something. The PEQ-15 is a rail laser pointer, helps managing that hit fire recoil, negative 30% hit fire recoil. We go down to the ATP, which is a triple laser pointer for fast acquisition, better aiming speed and accuracy. So negative 
horizontal recoil, negative 7% time to aim, and negative 10% shot spread. The next role that we can take a look at is the range finder. Increases range, but slows down target acquisition. So we get plus 15% range, but we also get plus 15% time to aim. I mean, it's a give and take right there. And then the final one will give us an advanced IR laser, increasing range and stability, plus 15% range, negative 10% sway, and negative 20% shot spread. So that is the final rail for the M4A1. But now we're gonna dive into the scopes because the scopes are something else we can mess with at the gunsmith. We have the built-in iron sight that gives us negative 10% vertical recoil. We have the EXP3 sight that's a holographic close range sight with a toggleable magnifier for extra range. The next scope we're gonna take a look at is the Comp M4 sight, good medium range sight, toggle to change the dot. Then we also have the digital sight. This is a good mid to long range sight. And then we have the panoramic sight, which is a solid all arounder toggle to change the dot. So some pretty good scopes on here. And remember, when you get onto the sniper rifles, you have different scopes, the SMGs, everything changes per type of weapon you're using. Right now we're just focused on the M4A1. And then now we're gonna go to the underbarrel. The underbarrel, you have your standard underbarrel. Then we have the grenade launcher, of course, we get the explosive rounds. We have the STFG, time to aim and mobility at the cost of recoil. And then we have the underbarrel, which is a lightweight vertical foregrip, which I purchased. So some of these you can purchase. Now this gives you mobility, vertical recoil, compensation at the cost of stability. And then the final one is gonna be the tactical vertical foregrip, a small vertical and horizontal recoil compensation at the cost of reload speed and stability. So those are our underbarrels. And don't worry, we aren't done just yet because we have the paint job. So once you're done modifying your weapon, why don't you make it look like a sexy beast? And there are a ton of camos for your weapon. A lot of these are unlocked through different things. If you upgrade your sharpshooter class, if you upgrade your specific class type, they're unlockable. Some are unlocked through different missions. Some are unlocked through finding them in the open world. And then of course, some of them you can purchase, but there are a ton of weapon paints that you can use. And what's crazy about this is you do not have to paint the full weapon, right? You can paint each component that you upgraded. So if you wanna change the full weapon to a specific skin or to a specific color, don't worry, you can go later on and change a specific piece like the barrel, the magazine, the muzzle, the rail, the stock, the underbarrel, and the scope can all be changed to a specific color. So it doesn't all have to be one color. It can be multiple colors, making customizing your weapon in the gunsmith that much more unique because you could have an M4A1 that looks completely unique to you compared to your best friend that's playing co-op with you. You guys could have the same exact M4A1 but the weapon skin will be totally different. So this is actually a pretty cool feature. I do like having this customization. This is something I would have loved to see in Division 2. I don't know what you guys think about the gunsmith, but I think the gunsmith would have been a really cool feature that they could have added to Division 2 versus looting for weapons. Once you find a weapon, then you have to loot for those different weapon mods that you just put on. That would have been cool and you can upgrade those weapon mods to make them a little bit stronger as you play the game. That's what I would have liked to see in Division 2. But hey, we don't have that in Division 2, but in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the gunsmith is a plus to me. So what do you guys think about this so far? I will be dropping Ghost Recon Breakpoint videos all weekend long since the beta is live right now. I'm trying to get as much content learn as much about the game as possible so that way I can let you guys decide for yourself and see if this is a game that you want to purchase. If you have any questions, if there's any type of video you want me to make on Ghost Recon Breakpoint, use the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you find these videos useful. That helps me out, that helps the video out, and I do appreciate that. If you're new to my channel, first time watching the video, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you turn that notification bell on so when I release a video, you guys get notified. But that's gonna wrap up this video on the gunsmith and customization of weapons in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Thank you guys again, but until the next Ghost Recon Breakpoint video, nothing but skills out.